How funny would it be if I just, you know, the chair snapped right now? Everybody. Today we're going to be reviewing the Gamdias Achilles M1, which I'm actually sitting in right now. For those of you that don't know, Gamdias is a company based out of California that specializes in PC gaming equipment. They were kind enough to reach out to me and ask if I'd like to review any of their equipment, and knowing that they had an RGB gaming chair, I couldn't help but ask, and they were nice enough to send me one. But before we get to the rest of the video, I want to let you guys know right off the bat, this is not a paid review, and that I'm doing this video because I want to, and I have a disgusting addiction to RGB PC gaming equipment. So hope you guys will understand that this is nothing but my uninfluenced opinion. So in this video, we're gonna be covering four important things here, which is the assembly process, the functionality and the comfort, the actual look of the chair, and then finally the price. So without further ado, let's get into the assembly process. All right, so I'm gonna bring it over here now and let's get started. Oh. As you guys can see, this is a pretty big package. It is pretty heavy, so if and when you guys do order this, just expect for it to be very difficult to move this around by yourself. I, I think it's around 150 pounds, if that. Okay, so first initial thoughts. From what I can tell here, all the styrofoam is protecting all the different corners of the actual chair. Uh, I'm actually so far impressed with uh, just how well protected this thing is. Step number one, it tells us we gotta start with the wheels. All right, sounds simple enough. So I have the base flipped upside down. It looks like I just popped the wheels in. It doesn't even look like I have to screw them in. Okay, all right, that looks simple enough. It looks like once, it looks like once you pop these things in, they're not really coming out. So this little cover here for the wheels is to actually block off all the different spots because it looks like this chair was welded together. So they have this little plastic cover to block that up. That's a nice added additional design. Step number two, it looks like we get the base of the chair and we have to remove bolts before attaching mechanism base support and armrest. All right. Yeah, it's gotta be this way. Okay, if you're getting the Achilles M1 model like I am, it's kind of not super intuitive, but it is also at the same time. The hole lines up kind of at the same angle with how the bottom of the chair of the base is facing, so the pole's going that way. Okay, so now I'm unscrewing the four screws for, I think, the left armrest, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side, and then I'm gonna screw them all in. Then I think I'm ready to move on to step number three. In hindsight, I should have definitely unscrewed and installed the armrest before I did the base mount for the seat of the chair but like i just showed you it's not impossible to still do it's just like slightly in the way not that big of a deal but i just thought i'd go ahead and mention that you know for you just in case you decide to buy this thing yourself okay so now we're completely done with step number two and now we're moving on to step number three where we connect the metal pole from the base of the chair to the wheels. So there is actually nothing, you know, that you screw in. It just looks like because of the way the metal shaft is shaped that the wheels will actually stop automatically and can't get pushed any farther up the pole. So it looks like now, looks like now we just flip this thing over. <laughs> okay, so it looks like these two are the levers that actually control the reclining aspect of the chair. 
And this one is just loose, kind of doing its thing. And this one here on the right, it looks like it's controlled by this lever. Yeah, it looks like if I pull this crank up, it should let me pull the chair back. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and screw in the top part of the chair and see if that changes. So before we screw this part in, you'll actually notice here at the bottom of the chair is where the USB cord is sticking out, which is what I assume we have to plug into the computer. And in case you're worried about it being too short, Gamdia also sends a USB extension cable, so you don't have to worry about buying one of those. You gotta unscrew the side bolts first. Okay, so now that we've unscrewed both sets of screws on the side, we're gonna go ahead and slide this thing in to the pre-cut holes. And now we are going to screw all of them back in. Okay, I just figured it out. So quick tip, when you're screwing these screws back into the sides to get the backrest on there, you actually can't just do it um, with it slid on like you think you can. What you have to do is you actually have to pull this chair a little bit farther back because when you slide the backrest onto the two mounts on the base of the chair, it kind of leans forward too far so the hole doesn't match up correctly for you to screw it in. But if you pull it back and just apply a little bit of pressure back, like what I'm trying to do now, and then push it in to screw it in, I should be able to get it here. Yeah, there we go, yeah. All right, let's see. One, two, and three. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Woo, this is nice. How funny would it be if I just, you know, the chair snapped right now. <laughs> but yeah, in terms of comfortability, this thing's, this thing's pretty solid. I mean, if you're taller, the armrests get up there. If you got like a lower desk, you can put them down here. But this is, uh, this is pretty nice. I definitely like this. I don't feel like um, I'm restricted. I got plenty of space to move around if I wanna like hunch over to this side or hunch over to this side. Yeah, I don't really have any complaints about this. This is nice. The wheels seem like they move pretty decently. They don't like take off when you kick off, which I like with my onto seat chair. Whenever I like slightly want to adjust, um, I kind of take off across the floor and this one doesn't do that, which I'm actually, yeah, I like that. I like that this has like a nice clean wrap here on the side, it's got a nice little pattern. As, as far as like functionality goes, this chair is pretty nice, but you know obviously uh, the point of getting an Achilles M1 uh, would be the RGB. So we're gonna actually go and take a look at that right now. So let's go. Okay, I think this thing looks pretty sick. Um, it's kind of a shame that you can't see it while you're sitting and actually operating on the computer, but it's definitely a spectacle. This thing, is, this thing looks pretty cool. You should be able to control these lights, so I'm actually gonna go in and try to operate this chair now and see what kind of different patterns we can get out of this thing. Okay, so the software is called Hera. It's H-E-R-A. You can find it pretty easily on their website. They don't have a lot of downloadable content, and it looks like uh, you can control this a bunch of different ways. I guess I'll go through this together with you guys. Okay, so there's there's breathing, there's neon, blink, seven color wave, random light, rotate, Static, run seven wave, and cross. And yeah, those, uh, those are the options. I think my favorite's definitely gonna be wave. And I'll turn the brightness all the way up. And the speed. I wanna see what that looks like. 
In my opinion, I, I think this thing looks great. I'll, I'll, I'll turn around now. So to wrap this review up, let's go over the four important points. Number one, the assembly process. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the hardest, this overall build process for the chair came in at a three. I will definitely re-emphasize, like I talked about earlier in the video, that actually screwing the backrest into the supporting levers on the side was definitely not the easiest thing, and it took some fidgeting around before I could actually get it to work. But other than that, putting this thing together was a breeze. Number two is functionality and comfort. And I will honestly say that I find this chair to actually be slightly more comfortable than my Onda Seat gaming chair. There are two major reasons I say that. Number one being that this chair actually has better ventilation for long periods of sitting. So if you do sit in your chair for um, long periods of time like I do, and you do sometimes get leg sweat, I've used this chair for the full day now and I haven't had that issue like I have with my Onda Seat chair. Number two is that the pillows that actually came with the Gomdius gaming chair are actually a lot more comfortable than the ones that came with my Onda Seat chair. Um, I would definitely say when I use this thing, I won't be using the head pillow just because I like to have my head farther back. But for the lower back support pillow, I can definitely see myself using this long term. And for the rest of the architecture of this chair, I wouldn't say that it's any better or any worse than my Onda Seat or any other gaming chair that I've experienced. It's actually very identical, but I would definitely say that the material that this is made out of, the ventilation as well as the backrest pillow is better than anything I've experienced. So in terms of functionality and comfortability, out of 10, I would definitely give this chair an eight. Number three, the overall look and aesthetic. This chair is a little bit slimmer than most gaming chairs, and I would say when I personally am looking to get one, if I'm looking just for the look, I do like something a little bit thicker and a little bit bulkier, but it's definitely not so thin that this is gonna get confused with a larger office chair. And as for the RGB lighting, I would definitely say that I am a fan. That doesn't go without saying that in the future, I would definitely like to see some company out there work in the RGB lighting almost into the stitches and kind of have just like the full architecture embedded with LED lights. But the fact that Gambias has actually gone so far as to just incorporate the RGB lighting into this chair in general, I, I definitely think that it makes it stand out from the competition. Earlier in the video when we went through the different patterns that this chair actually had, because of the lighting that I had projected onto the chair, it definitely didn't do many favors for it and make it look as good as the lights actually do look in real life. I turned the lights out for the shot that you're gonna look at right now, and honestly, I would say that the lights on this chair do look amazing, especially if you have it in the right lighting. Unfortunately, you'll never actually be able to see the RGB lighting when you're sitting in the chair, which I think is kind of an interesting design. So this chair is definitely something that I would say suits better for LAN party situations where you're gonna be showing off to other individuals who have the same enthusiast taste that you do. But overall, all things considered, when I look at the stitching, the lighting, the actual face and body of the chair, I would give this thing an eight out of 10. And finally, the price. The Achilles M1 comes in at just over $300 and you can find it at Newegg, Best Buy, or Amazon. And don't worry, I will put links in the description. Now, if you're one of those people that just desperately wants a gaming chair just to say that they have one, yeah, there are some chairs out there that are just over $100 that aren't brand name and have okay made quality. But if you're gonna be looking at a chair like this or other brand name chairs that other streamers and professional gamers use, they all actually tend to cost around the same price point for the Achilles M1, which is just over $300. So if you are an RGB fanatic and PC gaming enthusiast like myself, then why not get a chair that actually comes with the RGB lighting because most chairs that do cost just over $300 do not come with that, if not all of them. So taking into consideration that this chair does come with the additional RGB lighting feature and is priced around what you should expect to pay for a brand name gaming chair, I'm gonna give this price a six out of 10. So that wraps up the review. If you have any questions on this specific model, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Or if you just wanna let me know your thoughts or if you're gonna even buy one, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I appreciate your time and as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Oh, yes. Oh.